Good afternoon and evening, everyone. This is Terra Quator. It's Thursday, my day of the week, thank you. But it is Thursday, July 18th, 2024. It's day 200. Touch grass. You made it this far. I guess uh, the next goal is to just keep it going to the 365 or i guess cuz people say it's a leap year that it's day th i'll have to get day 366 but either way once we get to that point which i'm very confident we will very confident about that so it's a matter of when we get there but i apologize there's nothing really special other than touching grass this is this this world is literally um here, uh, excuse me, let me pull this camera down. So this world is literally called Grass Touching Simulator 2025. <laughs> we know what the music is, of course. You recognize it. But yes, it is Grass Touching Simulator. This does not look like grass, though. Might as well be. Whatever. But... Well, welcome to Grass Grass Touching Simulator. Uh, again, what I was going on for, or going on about at first, there's nothing really big going on today. There's nothing too elaborate. A lot of that being, we're just trying to finish getting... Th I, I know, this... We're just getting through the month. It, it's, been, it's been a difficult one again because of, you know, Lilia's family the heat wave and just circumstances being tight so getting through it although i am i am extremely happy we've managed to get this far being 200 days without having a single drop no alcohol feeling good and uh well it's as each i don't want to say each day because when i think about each day obviously i have to make more of a uh a conscious observation that I'm not drinking, but what I can say is that as each week goes by, if you'll excuse me, I would like to turn the uh, volume in the world down a little bit. Thank you. But as each week goes by, it gets that much easier for me to not even have to think about it. Uh, I do, I do have my more difficult days here and there. Um, I want to say last week was uh, around, what was it, last Thursday? Yeah, I want to say it was last Thursday. It was, it was either last Wednesday or last Thursday was a little bit more difficult with Lily's grandmother going to the hospital. Um, that was a difficult one, but obviously it was still easy enough for me to go, yeah, I'm not, I don't need a drink. I, I guess I could say I was fortunate that we didn't have any high stress situations come about in the early days of starting this challenge had that situation popped up or all the situations we're dealing with right now had they popped up in the beginning there's a there is a decent possibility i wouldn't be where i am right now making it 200 days just hi or you know hello <sighs> phrases and context are extremely important things <sighs> Excuse me. There we go. I actually prefer having no holder on. That's comfortable enough. But I am thankful that I'm able to get as far as I have and have the confidence to continue these improvements. Still, I do apologize with... Everything that's been going on, I haven't been able to do anything special. I haven't been able to do the dual videos with Tessa. I thought about trying to do something today with her, but time. Because at the time of recording this, it's 5.30 p.m. And there are still things I have to do outside in involving rubbish. Uh, there's rubbish in the yard because um, this neighborhood, for some reason, people see corner houses and they're the ones that like and they the, those are the houses people like throwing rubbish into so got to clean the rubbish that people have thrown into our yard 
I'd like to get some yard work done because tomorrow, supposedly, tomorrow is the day the landlords have them coming up to cut those dead trees down, so we won't have those. You remember me seeing them and observing the damage in uh, the, the last three fi three fi the last 360 video. You were able to see the, well, the damage on that tree. So the trees are getting cut down, which will make my job easier and the kids will be able to use a swing set with um, less diff, excuse me, I have the hiccups apparently, with less difficulty and less risk. But <sighs> I do wish I had more time for, that is not bad, that is not bad, hang on. I should have had myself angled this way. I mean, look, look at that sunset. I, I should have just kept it over here like, oh hey, sunsets are a lot better than just clouds. Indeed. Indeed. That that is that is um that is a lot nicer than just looking at clouds. So everyone else can look at the clouds rather than me and you not noticing what I've been staring at this entire time. Other than grass. It's hilarious though that a lot of the arguments when people see that you're online and you're having an argument with them, they sit there and say, Go touch grass and it's like Sure, I'll go touch some grass. I'll go mow my lawn right now. But honestly, I don't really... I understand what they're trying to say. But honestly, the people who say go touch grass, I, I argue, are just projecting. That the people who immediately turn to go touch grass are just online way, way too much really angry and they use it as a means of shutting down an argument you see a lot of shutting down an argument than you do I, I guess i don't want to say winning an argument because i don't see arguments to win i see arguments as finding a solution but the whole touch grass thing is just to shut down an argument to honestly just be hateful and uh, the the whole thing i think the people who say go touch grass are also some in, in a way telling themselves that they need to put their device down and they need to go outside and just chill although when i grew up being told to chill for some reason was a cue for myself and people around me to get more angry it was a thing because because it was always used to shut just like the touch grass thing chill was always made to shut down an argument and belittle someone yeah there's way too much of that these days then again it's the internet and what do people do on the internet they kind of compete to see who's the most despicable and it turns out right now, uh, there is one person in particular on the internet that has shown that they want to be top despicable individual. <sighs> Honestly, if you're in competition to see who's the most vile individual, you should really reassess your life. Like, um, I've seen my share of it and it's made me absolutely sick to my stomach what I've seen. And um, I'll just call this person out by name. That they're they're big enough already as it is. So a lot of people already know. But Destiny, you are a despicable human being. Your your behavior has been absolutely vile. You lack empathy, and you seem to only be there. You seem to only be in in what you're doing purely out of hate, and ju to just be a hateful person. And you, you seem to have some degree of arousal out of being a terrible human being. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I mean, there are other things you can do in life to gain amusement and mental arousal, I guess. 
to to pique your there are other things you can do in life to pique your curiosity other than just be a vile human being but i i can't expect you to to really change course on your um decision making it's been pretty solid on that one however if you do turn course i mean good on you maybe that like if you if you change course and stop being a total piece of trash then maybe people will start to respect you a little more i know the first thing someone's gonna say is that's really rich from someone who has uh, almost no followers whatsoever i get that but at least i have integrity I recently lost a subscriber on YouTube, and I don't want people to go searching around, but they they unsubscribed to this channel because they because of our disliking or distaste toward parasocial relations on the internet. So they they openly said that they were unsubscribing, and the whole good luck doing your own thing and then tried to say you know they were a high level advertiser and my decision must have ruined some things well i don't mind see i do have integrity i'm not going to bother and i don't like the idea of entertaining these things because they've 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 caused more trouble than they're worth and with that and i and i'm definitely talking about the instant incident on twitch where we you know, just kind of backed out of it. We backed out of it because there were people who wanted me to put socializing with them above my own family. I have integrity. My family comes first. And backtracking to what's going on with that um, despicable human being, if, the, if they decide to have some integrity and backtrack their rhetoric because it's absolutely disgusting if they backtrack that then then maybe they'll gain back some of what they've lost yeah at first they lost a whole bunch of people following but then gained more for not for you know doubling down on just being terrible but they also lost more opportunities than they gained which means now you have an audience filled with people who are only going to be hateful it's better to have balance rather than surround yourself with the exact same energy of hatred. And that is, uh, that's what you've surrounded yourself with. Difference between yourself and myself? I don't have many people who listen to me, and that's okay. I don't need to turn to distasteful behavior in order to increase my online presence. I'm okay with that. I would rather grow slowly or not at all if it means holding to my own integrity and not turning to what I see as distasteful behavior or what you're doing absolutely vile. But that kind of topic supposed to be on for the other channel that I want to start working on too, which will be at the same time as this one. So at the time of recording, being this is day 200, there will be more serious topics discussed on my second channel. I need to rename it because I think I just have it like my ranting corner or something like that. I'll rename it. I, I don't want it to cover just news. I, it's, honestly, I want it for more um, ranting. So I guess you can see this. That would be a little bit of a preview or something. I don't know because I don't really know how I'm supposed to go about it. But... There are times where if you have distasteful opinions, sometimes it is better to just keep it to yourself and to reevaluate. Is this worth my time? Is this worth other people's time? Like what I, I've had my share of slip ups in when it comes to arguing where I just call someone an a-hole. I end up feeling bad about it because that's not what I do not like being rude to people. I don't, I, I honestly feel a level of guilt when I just call someone an a-hole and block them when they're being, when their behavior's in distaste. Like when someone called me a, 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 um, a dumb a 
on um, on X. So I just called them an a-hole and blocked them. I do feel some degree of guilt for that. But I, at the time, I also understood that I wasn't going to have an intelligent conversation with someone because they were going to stoop to insults first before anything else. And I don't need to go on about it. It's not. The most important thing is when you're having a disagreement with someone, whether it's heated or not so heated, if you're having a disagreement with someone and it does start to get more tense and frustrating, Ask yourself and not them. Ask yourself, is this worth my time? Is this worth my energy? And by energy, I don't mean just physical. Is it worth your mental and emotional energy to get more and more upset over a matter that may or may not be important to you, to yourself and the other party at that time? Is it worth your time and energy? If it's not, just say, look, this isn't worth my energy. I'm going to go do something else. You don't need to go tell them to touch grass because we're already in grass touching simulator, which is really weird. I'm going to be mowing my, my lawn. My easement needs mowing really bad. So I'll be doing that soon too. But if you, rather than telling them that they need to touch grass, perhaps if you're getting too frustrated, you say, look, this is too much. I'm going to go do something else because this isn't worth my time. And I'd rather not. You, you can always be polite about it, but there, there are time and place to, for um, gentlemanly behavior. And there are times to just be like, you know what? You're a jerk. I'm out. There, there are times like that. It's, it's um, what people say, pick and choose your battles, I guess. I don't need to be ranting about this right now. I should just be happy that I'm at 200 days completely sober. I did I did tell someone on X today because they were talking about that they were on their fourth day. This was in a, in a different conversation, of course. So you're not just going to find it all willy-nilly. I'm trying to remember what what I was looking at to even see that. But they said they were on their fourth day and having a hard time. So, look, for those who are trying to stop drinking and you are having a tough time, the first three, like the first day, you're hung over, so you get through it. The second day is terrible. The second day and third day, second day, third day, and a little bit of the fourth day are the difficult ones because those are the days where rather than just the hangover, you deal with the the mental withdrawals. You, you have your you have your withdrawal symptoms. Um, I want to say the most difficult. I won't say worse because the hangover is technically a withdrawal symptom, but the most difficult are the few days afterward if you deal with, you know, alcoholism. So those are the most difficult ones being day two, three, and four. They were on day four. That's one of your very difficult ones. Things will remain difficult probably for about two weeks, and then you should be past the, I guess I should, I could say the, the, the physical side of it where all, all the uh, the physical desires that your body have for that start to subside after two weeks. Two weeks. This, ha this hand does not want to show the number two that much. It wants to show th three. Yeah, there we go. Two weeks. It's just being difficult. It happens. So after two weeks, it gets a little easier. And then after three weeks, even easier. Four weeks, four weeks, you know, the, the one month point is where you're like, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling goodish. I say ish because the, you're not past the mental portion. You're past the physical portion. The mental portion is, that would be a little bit of a tough cookie. Like, how do I, how do I describe the mental portion? Uh, well, always that that back of your mind, and some, and, and especially in the early times, I'd say for the per first two months, it's not going to be in the back of your mind. It's going to be in the front of your mind, and that is one of the reasons why I have started this project of recording every single day. To because these recordings aren't exactly for viewers. If viewers like it, viewers like it, and I do hope it allows people who deal with that problem to have the opportunity to say, Hey, if they're doing it, I should give it a try too. If they decide that that's fine. But really this project is for me. This project keeps me focused on just 
not turning to drinking because it had gotten so bad that it, it was the littlest of inconvenience would make you want to turn to it. And for those who are alcoholics, think about that. When you're trying to not drink for a little while, and you're like, okay, this time I mean it, I'm done drinking, I'm going to stop. And it hits the point where it is, again, the littlest of inconvenience. I'm not talking like, oh, I got fired from my job. That's that's not little. I'm talking little inconvenience. Like, you got out of bed in a sour mood or you didn't have what you wanted for lunch or supper or uh, you had an argument with your loved one. And I'm not talking a really big one. I'm just talking a little argument about who didn't take out the trash or that the yard looks bad. You know, little stuff. Those little inconveniences are the ones that make you go, screw it, I need a drink. For those who deal with alcoholism, think about that. How, how, how quick are you to say, screw it, I need a drink? Think about it. So that's where I say though that's like the first two months that thought process is always in the front of your mind. So you have to make a more conscious effort to suppress your, I don't want to say desires, impulse. Ah! <laughs> I just punched myself in the face. Ah. Anyway, impulse. Impulse. Pulse is the word I was looking for. Ugh. You need two months of of conscious effort of suppressing your impulse to buy alcohol when inconvenienced. Because those things add up. And then during the third month, the... Wow. The, th the third month is when you start thinking of your root causes, your root inconveniences that make you say, screw it, I need a drink. You think about those and think about what different you could have done. I don't mean like, oh, well, maybe I could have gone and played Monopoly. Ew, why would you play Monopoly? That sounds like a game where you're at, like somewhere along the line, someone's going to throw the board in the air, say, screw it, I need a drink. So I don't play Monopoly. Plus, I don't like Monopolies. I also don't like the board game. Everyone wanted... What was it? Everyone wanted to be the thimble. Was it a thimble? I had a thimble. I like thimbles. Thimbles are cool. But... With all of that aside... Think about... The situations that make you want to have drinks the most and then you can either decide those are things i need to avoid for a while or that you're like okay you know what i'm going to tackle them right here and now the faster i get them taken care of and act and make a conscious effort of dealing with them i'll have a better time of dealing with other situations as they come up but you want to think about your largest key like your largest Stimu whether physical or e or emotional stimuli that make you want to have a drink, they need to be confronted. They need to be dealt with. It doesn't mean with hostility. Constructively. Constructively think about those stimuli that make you need to have a drink and deal with them. Whether it's by deciding, okay, these are things I need to avoid. Or again, find a solution for them if it's a problem. After the third month, you're on to your fourth month. That's when things do start getting really easy. Once I hit month four, which was April, I was an egg. Um, April was easy. A April was easy. May was easy. June was for different reasons. Uh, so we had we had our share of very high stress situations happen throughout this summer. Well, early summer. Because summer technically started after the 20th of June. Technically. Sure didn't feel that way. But 
by by month four, it was easy enough to where I would have something that was a severe inconvenience or high stress situation. And so month, by month five, I didn't have to worry anymore. I still have to be careful because the last thing I want to do is be comfortable. And I don't mean like I hate being comfortable. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying comfortable enough to the point where all of a sudden I do something without thinking like grabbing a drink because believe it or not, I do use wine in my cooking for like pasta. I do use wine once in a while for it. And sometimes I'll use a, a beer for uh, taco meat, not ground beef, only shredded, like only um, briskets and, and chicken breast. And I'll slow cook all of that in, in beer to add to the spices, then I'll boil off the alcohol kind of thing. But when I do that, I have to make, I have to be conscious of what I'm doing because knowing my past of where I would be drinking subconsciously, I'd like where, where it used to be so bad that I would be doing my grocery shopping. This, this was last year. This was last year. I'd be doing my grocery shopping. And by the time I'm in checkout, putting my stuff onto the conveyor for, for the cashier, because I do not do self checkout. No self checkout is wrong. I have strong opinions about self checkout. You shouldn't do it. Anyway, when I'm in checkout, putting things on the conveyor, all of a sudden I look in my cart and there's alcohol there. Even on times I had no intention of buying it. And that's because I was grabbing it without thinking. So that's where I decided it was important that when I go to the grocery store, which is my favorite store of all, by the way, I absolutely love shopping so long as it's for groceries. I love grocery shopping. I don't like clothes shopping because me IRL, I wear clothes that I can beat up for a long time that are going to have the durability for me to beat the crud out of them because I don't care much for IRL fashion. Now, when it comes to digital fashion, you should see my IMVU wardrobe. My goodness. But anyway, keep a con be conscious of what you're shopping for when you're trying to quit alcohol. And like I said, after month four is when it starts to get easy, but especially when shopping in your comfort zones, you need to be more conscious of your actions. You need to be conscious of what you're putting in your shopping cart, conscious of what you're paying for. And if you do have to buy alcohol for like cooking or something like that, or you, or you have, you know, a spouse or a friend or a roommate or something that does drink because you want to be in a position like mine where you're like, well, if I'm not drinking, I'm not going to make other people stop drinking. Like Lily does still drink once in a while, nowhere near as much as we used to. But I already told her because I'm not drinking does not mean she doesn't have to, but it still means you need to be conscious of your purchasing habits and do so in a very careful and controlled manner. And by month six, I'd say month seven, month, um, month seven is the easiest part with the conscious effort where I can say, okay, I need to get this for Lily. I'm good. But then I have to stop myself from getting more vegetable, like gallons of vegetable oil to do deep frying. I did deep, deep fry some chicken this month. I deep fried the chicken the, the day that telephone pole exploded down the, down the road. That, that was really good fried chicken, though. Like, I, I'm trying to come up with another chicken breading recipe. or You, you know, the breading. The, the good stuff. I'm trying to create a more... Um, I want to I want to do a fried chicken breading that has a taste resembling Japanese curry. That's what I'm working on right now. I'm getting there, but I need to perfect it a little more for it to have the consistency you want in that kind of thing. And if I get that, oh, I will be very happy because I do absolutely love curry. I love curry, but I also really like fried chicken. I don't do fried chicken very often though. 
I've kind of had to cut back. In fact, Lily and I are talking about the month of August on what we're going to do. We think we're going to do no red meat for the month of August. We're hoping to do mostly seafood, but not fried. Got to reduce the fried food. My, my gut could use some toning down. So I know by... I'm trying to decide when and how, really it's not just a matter of when it's a matter of how i can go about getting my physical health in order because i don't live anywhere near a gym all of the all of the uh the parks in my direct area are closing down because people don't use them this hand won't let me do quotes so maybe i'll do it this way there we go i'll just do it this way um because no one uses them. For, for some of it, I can understand. Not everyone does. And a lot of it is there aren't very many kids in this neighborhood. There are more than there used to be. Because when we first moved here, there were... Two? They're all older than, than Buttercup, though. That's the problem. They're all older than Buttercup. But there, there, there were two. There are more kids, but we don't really speak to those families. There's nothing wrong, of course. It's just this neighborhood people have created a habit of only keeping to themselves kind of thing. It, it's starting to change a little bit, but at the same time, not so much. People are, well, I can definitely say people are more cautious these days than they were when my childhood. Whole, a whole multitude of different things. But it's also the heat. This heat this summer is, it's unbearable. It, it is, it's terrible. But, alas, if you're trying to quit drinking, think of the things I said. I know I was rambly and pause a lot, but that's because I'm not... As much, I've been at this for 200 days, and I'm still not used to just speaking openly, so it, it's still a growing process for me. But think of the things I said, and if you have to, create, uh, give yourself a daily project. If you have to, a daily project or hobby that was different from your drinking habits. Do something like that and make sure you focus on that and say, like, especially when you say you need to have a drink. That's when you turn to, to your project or your hobby. Turn to that to avoid the impulse to drink. That, uh, that's why these videos have been so helpful for me. And that's why these videos are mostly for me and not everyone else. But if you view, you view. And I'm fine with that. Otherwise, if I didn't want people to see whatsoever, I'd probably just list these videos as private. But again, I don't mind people watching. If you watch, you watch. If you don't like it, you don't like it, and that's okay. But if you like what you see, you can hit the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment sections down below. That's not hard either. <laughs> I'm I'm also messing with you. Do what you will with the information you've gotten. You can take it with a grain of salt. You can let it in one ear and out the other. Or, or you can give it some thought. Come up with your own ideas. I'd like to know, for those who are trying to not drink, what, are, what do you... What do you do in order to avoid it? I'm always open to hearing other ideas, and I'm not talking about other substances. I'm talking about just things you can do, like writing, um, try new tea. I, there, I do, oh, that's right, I need another tea candle so we can make that blooming tea. We still have plenty of that blooming tea, and Lily's going to want some, but I need tea candles. I'll find them at some point. But I've, I've rambled enough. I definitely have rambled enough. Because, my goodness, I have. <laughs> well, anyway, I, again, I am sorry that I haven't been able to do anything special for it. There are things I wanted to do, but with how everything turned out throughout the summer, things go out the window, especially when you lack the skills to do what you'd like to. I mean, like, skills, consistency, experience. I can tell you, doing these videos gets easier and easier, especially with the editing process. I'm getting faster at editing them and getting them out the door, metaphorically speaking. But there are other things that I'd love to be able to do that just, frankly, I don't have the skill or experience of doing. 
So it'll take time before I can start doing those specials and everything. But I, I hope everyone has enjoyed themselves. I hope this has been an enlightening video. But I'm going to get going. I'm going to get this bit finished up. I'm going to make dinner for the kids. It's going to be a small dinner, something small and simple. So I hope everyone has enjoyed themselves. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll see you all tomorrow on Friday for day 201. I mean, think about it. 200 days. It's still a major accomplishment when, you, when you're someone like myself who's been drinking almost every day for 15 years straight. So going 200 days is a major accomplishment. The next major milestone comes up in... I want to say it comes up in next month. I want to say next month is when the next major milestone comes up. Being the longest I've ever gone not drinking since I started drinking at age 15. I know that's that's terrible, but think about it. When you're a teenager and you're around questionable people, even if you go a long time, like six months, somewhere along the time line, you're going to have another drink and you're going to get drunk and party with your friends. I mean, that's, I'm not condoning the behavior, but I can say most of the people I knew in high school, we all did that. Not all the time, of course, we, we still partied and stuff. I don't condone it. I was a terrible kid. Remember, I had a lot going on in my life, but next month will be the milestone I've for the longest I've gone without drinking since I was 15 years old. That's terrible. That is a terrible revelation, but it's also true. So I look forward to hitting the next major milestone, which will be awesome. This is Terra Quator on your Thursday, July 18th, 2024, day 200. See you tomorrow on Friday. My computer was not over there. It is over there. Again, I'm still wrong. It's... It's right there. There. Yeah.